the, the next subject for Saturday Morning Science has to deal with solid bodies that are undergoing a rotation, uh, solid bodies that have different moments of inertia uh, about their axes of rotation. First, we're going to look at a book that as a rectangular solid that has three different major axes with a different moment of inertia about each one of its axes. We're going to look at, at how this book rotates uh, about each of its axes. So here we see a book rotating about its uh, uh, one, one of its axes, and, and it just rotates nice and stable, as you can see. It's just happy rotating that way. Here it's rotating about another one of its axes, and again, it's happy rotating in that direction. And both of these axes represent the minimum moment of inertia and the maximum moment of inertia. The third axis that we're going to see is intermediate between those two. And there's an interesting relationship that if a body has an intermediate moment of inertia, it can't rotate stably about that axis. So now let's look at this book when it rotates about its intermediate moment of inertia. And here it is, and you can see it's not rotating stably. It's oscillating back and forth as it's rotating about this axis that is intermediate in terms of its moment of inertia. Now here we have a cylinder rotating, and it happens to be one of our film cans. It makes a nice solid cylinder, and it's rotating stably about its long axis. And here we see another cylinder. It's one of our camera lenses, and again, it's rotating stably about its long axis. Now we have a cylindrical-shaped bottle filled with sodium chloride solution. And this is one of the squeeze bottles that comes from our galley. And we use these bottles to put salt on our food rather than have to deal with a salt shaker, which would be a, a real mess in, in a weightless environment. Uh, we have our salt dissolved in water and in a little squeeze bottle. And when you want to salt your food, you squirt a little salt water on it and, and away you go. But look what happens when we rotate this cylindrical bottle filled with liquid and compare its behavior with what we saw with the other uh, two solid cylinders. So we're going to give this salt uh, cylinder a spin, and look what happens. It starts to tumble end over end. It rotates a few times axially, and now it's tumbling end over end. So what's happening here? It's obviously different than the previous cylinders we saw that were solid, and it may have some relationship to the book that we saw earlier where it could spin stably about some of its axes, but then it couldn't spin stably about uh, one of its axes. So now let's look at another cylinder. Uh, this one happened to be a, uh, it's a, well, uh, I guess you could say it's a baby bottle. Um, I wanted to, I figured it'd be handy to have something that approached a, a beaker on orbit that was graduated. And as I was leaving the house, uh, going into quarantine, the only thing I could think of that would meet flight safety would be this plastic baby bottle, which happened to be sitting on the, the kitchen counter. So anyway, it ended up on orbit here. And so I have this baby bottle that's uh, graduated, uh, and it makes a nice little beaker. And it's filled with a uh, soap solution that you can use for making a thin film, stretch thin films with. But again, it to a first order, it's a nice cylinder. We're going to give it a spin, and let's see what kind of behavior it shows. Give it a nice axial spin, and look at the baby bottle. It rotates a few times axially, and then it tumbles end over end, behaves just like what we saw with the sodium chloride. So uh, something's... Uh, uh, happening here. We have a solid cylinder. <clears throat> it spins stably. We have two different kinds of liquid cylinders. We'd spin them axially, and they don't spin stably. They tumble end over end. Now, let's look at a different cylinder. It's uh, a long, uh, it's, a, it's about a foot and a half long piece of uh, plexiglass uh, uh, tubing that's filled with water. So it's a, again, it's a liquid cylinder. It's filled with, with fluid, and we're going to give it an axial spin, and let's look at its uh, rotation. And here it is rotating, and it's rotating, and it's rotating, and it's rotating stably. It doesn't seem to want to 
tumble end over end unless it has a collision like it just did there with the hatch. So what's happening here? We saw a solid cylinder rotating stably. We saw two different kinds of short squat cylinders filled with liquid that wouldn't rotate stably. And now we saw a long skinny cylinder filled with liquid and it was rotating stably. So something funny is happening here dealing with intermediate moments of inertia and the ability of a liquid cylinder to become spin stabilized. And, and I'll leave it as an exercise to the student to really figure out what's going on. But this leads us to a rhetorical question. If we had fresh eggs and hard-boiled eggs in a weightless orbital environment, could you tell the difference between your fresh egg and your hard-boiled egg? And you ask any grade school kid about that, and they'll know the answer to the problem because you take the fresh egg and you spin it on the tabletop, and then you take the hard-boiled egg and you spin it on the tabletop, and the two will spin differently. And you can tell the difference between fresh eggs and hard-boiled eggs. Now imagine trying to do that same experiment in a weightless environment where you could rotate the egg now where it's not confined to the tabletop. Will you be able to tell the difference between a fresh egg and a hard-boiled egg? That's the rhetorical question. And we'll see the answer here shortly, but I just want to kind of have folks think a little bit about will future space colonists who are raising their chickens in space and have somebody mix up fresh eggs with hard-boiled eggs, will they be able to figure out how to separate their eggs out? And we'll see the answer here uh, in, in the video. So we're going to roll the video, and it's going to go quickly. But we'll see two eggs in my hand, and I'm going to rotate them and send them flying towards the camera. And you'll be able to see if you can tell the difference. One of them's hard-boiled, one of them's fresh. And see if you can tell the difference in the rotating behavior, the spinning behavior between these eggs. And you'll, you'll see it three times in a row. So let's watch closely here. We'll roll the video. There's the eggs. There's one egg going towards the camera. Now we're going to roll the other egg. Look at it. And we're going to see it again. We're going to rotate one egg. Watch it. Rotate the second egg. Look at that one. Here we're going to going to go the third time. Watch it. Oops, it looks like it's going to bonk right off the camera. Oh, we better stop it right there. Okay, so that's done with the eggs. <laughs> And there's an interesting relationship that if a body has an intermediate moment of inertia, it can't rotate stably about that axis. That was great. Now, after I, I downlinked that one to Saturday Morning Science, and about two days later, I got an email from Andy Thomas, who was deputy uh, uh, to the head of the astronaut office, and he sent me an email, and it had two lines in it. He said, you didn't really have a fresh egg and a hard-boiled egg on orbit. And then, how did you get those on orbit? No, actually, uh, they weren't real eggs. They were plastic eggs. That uh, the kind of plastic eggs that you put on a chicken to try to get them enticed into sitting on a nest and laying more eggs. So I took a couple of those plastic eggs on orbit, and then I drilled holes in them so I could take a syringe and inject water into one of the eggs, and the hole was small enough that the water just stayed in the egg. And so now I had a liquid-filled egg, and then the egg without liquid in it. So it was basically the same as a hard-boiled egg. And so I could do the demonstration that way. So I, yeah, so I, so I took egg decoys up there.